So I had to do a bit of a change of scenery. Paige and Elliot and Ozzy got home and I finished sorting most of the family's clothes. No, I finished sorting the family's clothes. Now I have to sort through mine and Paige's clothes and put away my clothes because I have been living out of laundry baskets because executive function is a thing I apparently don't have. So, like I was saying before, right? I, I learned to have empathy. I learned to have... Uh, sympathy, things like that, based off of how I felt in a situation like that. So, for me, I can't watch, like, just as a broad example, The Office. I can't watch The Office. And it's not that it's not a good show. It's a very well-written show. But it's also a very awkward show. And it is making light of a lot of things that <laughs> that I struggle with and I've dealt with for my life that non-neurodivergent people, normal neuro people, they don't they don't deal with it the same way. So it's funny to them, okay? In the office, I love watching the videos of Jim's pranks. However, I can't watch a lot of them because in actuality, Jim from The Office is a bully. And he is not only a bully, he is a non-neurodivergent person who is bullying an obviously neurodivergent person. Right? Oh, I just forgot his name. Rain Wilson's character in it. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It's obviously, obviously neurodivergent. Most likely on the autism spectrum. And that's why he has such what everybody else deems as weird passions or the way he dresses or the way he acts, that type of thing. Right? The man is obviously neurodivergent. Um... Steve Carell's character, World's Greatest Boss, is obviously a neurodivergent character. And everybody makes fun of them. And I can't handle that. The whole point of the humor in that is they are making fun of awkward people doing awkward things. That is the humor. And that is what hurts me. I... For instance, cannot watch, like, Ben Stiller movies, right? Most of his movies are all based off of awkward comedy. Something about Mary, Along Comes Polly, uh, Mystery Men, uh, things like that. I can't deal with most of his movies because when I watch them, my programming, like I was telling you about, looks at that situation cycles through every time I've been in a similar situation and how I felt in that situation and tells me that's how that person is feeling in that situation. So when all this awkward stuff is happening, getting caught in a zipper, gel in the hair, all that stuff, right? Very Ben Stiller stuff. I'm thinking of all the times that I have done something similar. I have been embarrassed like that. And I instantly feel bad for the character I am sad for the character, and I no longer understand why anybody is laughing. There's no kindness in those movies, right? Even even the people that are trying to be kind to the person it's been awkward to are awkward in and of themselves. That is the humor, like the American Pie movies, right? Or just any, any style of movie like that. I can't watch them. It's just too awkward. <sighs> I really have to, don't I? 
side thing of being neurodivergent. This shirt is ratty. This shirt is old. This shirt is... I got freshman or sophomore year spring break in Chicago. And I can't get rid of it. I can't. I don't, I don't know how to get rid of it. And I've been trying to get rid of it for probably two years now. And I can't. Because it's sentimental to me. It, it was a good time in my life. And it, it's hard for me to let it go. Because I'm afraid I'll forget that time in my life. Because like I said. Everything I do. Gets relayed against other times I have felt that way. So I understand how I am supposed to react. I really enjoy... Like, like sci-fi movies. I enjoy big action adventure epics. I the reason I enjoy them is because they make me feel like there is nothing in this world I'm not capable of doing. It also makes me feel like there is some kind of point to my life. That at some point, I am going to become the person I have wanted to be my whole life. And I am going to be able to do good and change the world. Is that something that's likely to happen? Honestly, probably not. Just pure realism. Is it something I want to have happen, though? Yes. Spent my entire life being told that I was smart and intelligent and I was destined for greatness. At the same time, being told by the other half of my life that I'm annoying, I am too much, and I need to just step down off my high horse and be a normal person. Stop always trying to be so much. I can't seem to find a good middle ground. I can't. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not wired correctly. We, we talked about this, right? Another shirt I need to just do away with. My brain is not wired the same way most people's are. It makes me feel broken. And so I need something to make me feel better. I like music. I like visual media. And I like talking. I like talking. I like figuring the world out. I like trying to decide or, you know, discover what's going on in the world, how things are affecting me, why this does this, why that does that. I, I, I need all the input. And then I get burnt out from all the input because all my input pathways don't work like most people's. So I get all this information in there. I do all this studying and figuring out the stuff I want to figure out. And then I get burnt out because it's too much. And I get depressed and I get overwhelmed and I get, especially when it comes to important things like mental health, like the world government and the way people are treated, or like I said in the beginning, women's rights, uh, minority rights, black rights, things like that. The rights of the poor, the just human rights in general. It all just builds up and my brain doesn't know how to just process and compartmentalize it because my brain sees connections between things that most people are able to choose to ignore and I can't let it go. But I've been told for so long that I am an overreactor, an overthinker, uh, you know, I, I meddle too much. I'm always trying to help. I always... That I have learned that me seeing those connections is wrong. And I have learned that people that see connections and things that other people don't see, according to 
pretty much all mass media. It's crazy. Right? It's never the same people that you see with all the seeing all these connections between unrelated things. The only time it's the same person is when it's the hero. And then it pays off in the end. But even then, they are still seen as crazy until it pays off. They are still viewed as crazy until it pays off. It's the same as heroes and villains and movies and TV and stuff, right? You see them and they've always got a lisp or a stutter or some type of missing limb, giant scar, mental deficiency issue, whatever you want to call it. We're taught by all the media growing up that everybody that's different is either wrong or somebody to be pitied, somebody to think less of, somebody to look down on. We are not taught that people are just different. We are shown and taught that different is bad. Different is wrong. Different needs to be... You need to be wary of them. You need to be careful what you say around them, what you do around them. You need to make sure that you don't upset them, that you don't rile them up. We spend the bulk of our lives being told people like me are bad news, are crybabies, are lazy, just not trying hard enough, psychopaths in disguise, uh, future serial killers, future... And it's not okay. It's not fair. And I am choosing to use my voice to battle that. To battle the stigma. All the times in my own past that I have been mistreated and misunderstood simply because my brain works different.